Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zang here, and today I am back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online VGC 17 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. I am finally back from London, and my upload schedule has been a little bit erratic in the last couple of days, so sorry there hasn't been a consistent kind of stream of daily uploads, but uh, I actually am in the middle of final exams right now, just took my first one, and really, really wanted to get a video up between the uh, next couple of exams, so uh, sorry for the weird upload time as well, and basically after a week I will be free from school for a whole month or so, so I'll do my best to keep up the daily content once that's around. I want to do a lot more obviously as well, but uh, yep, I am using the team that I brought to the London International Championships, which I competed in this last weekend. Uh, fortunately, I didn't go as far as I really would have liked at that tournament. Ended up with a 6-3 and three run, and I, you know, uh, it was a bunch of factors. Like, I, knew I wanted to build a more defensive team, and uh, I brought this super, super hyper offensive team that I kind of worked around with starting from the beginning of the season, and it's a lot of fun, but it definitely has some notable weaknesses. Uh, that being said, I think the team was still really strong. I just could have played a lot better in the couple of losses that I did have uh, at London. So, uh, it was definitely a little bit of a disappointing start, but, you know, VGC 17, I think, is an incredible format, and there's so much for me to learn so I'm really excited to kind of explore this format and I will be doing a team report on the last team that I featured on Road to Rank, uh, the Torkoal team just so a lot of you guys can try playing around with that and uh, maybe we'll do a team report on this team as well but let's get into this first match my opponent is running a team of Oranguru, Magnazone, Hariyama, uh, Alolan Marowak, Tapu Bulu, and a Pelipper so uh, definitely a lot of noticeable threats on my opponent's team um hmm, let's see I think I'm actually going to go with Metagross and Gyarados as a lead, because I do have Taunt with Gyarados. Uh, obviously, my opponent's team is rather Trick Room oriented. I'm going to go with Tapu Lele in the back, and for the last one... You know, Pelipper is actually not a bad option, given that he has uh, Bulu, he has uh, Hariyama, and he has a, a Marowak. So I'm actually going to go with that. So you do see my team, I haven't talked about it very much yet, but you will see the items and whatnot obviously as I go into things. Uh, it's very, very hyper offensive as I mentioned. It's got two Z moves, it's got a choice band user, a choice scarf user, uh, and then a focus sash and Gyarados with a citrus berry. So we're gonna get into this first battle. I will do my best to uh, you know, pick up the steam here on Road to Ranked. Uh, I've been playing a little bit off screen and just testing a bunch of different things, but really would like to start getting that rating up a little bit higher. So we're actually gonna see Hariyama and Magnazone from my opponent's side of the field against my Metagross and Gyarados. So, this is um, it's not the worst, but it's also not the best, mainly because Magnezone, of course, is able to uh, keep me in here with Magnet Pole, assuming that it does have that. So the first turn, my opponent is most likely just going to want to Fake Out. Now, this actually isn't too bad. I'm just going to go for the Earthquake. And I could switch into... Like, the Thunderbolt from Gyarados is obvious. So what I could do here is I could just go for an attack. Uh, but the main thing is if I do attack, it means... Actually, I get the switch into Pelipper. So yeah, that's not the worst case scenario. So I'm actually just going to Earthquake and... I'm going to Waterfall Magnezone. Yeah. So I had a bunch of options there. I could have switched into Tapu Lele for the Psychic Terrain, and that would prevent him from going for uh, a knockout, or excuse me, a fake out. Uh, of course, because Psychic Terrain does prevent the fake out. But what that means is then Metagross probably doesn't want to lock itself into Earthquake. We are going to see the fake out come up from Hariyama. Is going to target down that Metagross. Not too much of a surprise there. Uh, Gyarados is going to get the waterfall off. And the question really is, did Magnezone target Metagross? Uh, actually, it goes for a Thunder onto Gyarados. So I got a little bit lucky there given that I avoided, but surprising option to go for Thunder given that it's not 100% accurate, it's only 70% outside of rain. Uh, I wouldn't have minded the knockout there because it meant to free switch into Pelipper, and what the free switch into Pelipper means, I can just Earthquake and go for a Hurricane onto Hariyama, so uh, yeah. So now I can just Earthquake with Metagross, which my opponent is definitely probably not expecting, and go for a Waterfall onto Hariyama. Um, Thunder on Magnezone indicates to me, I don't know, maybe he doesn't have Thunderbolt. Uh, as we actually see a Ranguru come in here, that's also fine by me, uh, because I will have the option to taunt it. Uh, although it's likely that my opponent does have Mental Orb on a Ranguru, and that Waterfall does so much damage. Wow. Uh, that Hariyama doesn't look bulky at all, because I am max attack with Gyarados, um, but Hariyamas are very, very bulky Pokemon. I, I like, get the feeling my opponent's team isn't Eevee'd, because, uh, like, Waterfall plus Choice Band Earthquick from Metagross, like, they shouldn't be picking up knockouts like that, but maybe he's just super, super bulky. Uh, it's going to be Feeny coming in here, though. Uh, but, you know, the other really good thing is Earthquake is a 2-hit KO onto a Ranguru, which is really surprising. Like, 
I don't know, even if my opponent had like full defenses, I wouldn't have minded how, like, Hariyama couldn't do anything there, and uh, Bulu is actually a bigger threat offensively. So I'm just going to Earthquake here, and I'm just going to Waterfall into a Ranguru. The reason why I'm not switching out right now is because I don't mind the Choice Band Earthquakes coming out. Top of Bulu actually switches out into Magnezone, so... Uh, yeah, this first game looks like it's gonna end pretty quickly here. There's nothing my opponent can really do. Uh, Waterfall's just gonna come off the Gyarados, and that should... Yeah, that almost knocks out a Ranguru, uh, but Earthquake here will pick up the finish. So, yeah, uh, you know, unfortunate Thunder miss from my opponent there, but I think that the Pelipper actually would have provided more offensive pressure, because it obviously can hit, uh, the top of Blue are super effective. Or not super effective, excuse me. Um, or yeah, yeah, super effective. I was thinking top of Feeny for a second. So, so far in this game, we've picked up three knockouts and uh, have not taken any damage yet uh, after the grassy terrain healing. But yeah, I think my opponent maybe just w had super offensive Pokemon or just, you know, didn't have really good EVs or IVs. That's what I would guess. So, yeah, I'm just going to switch on into Lele. And uh, I suppose I'll taunt. Yeah, so that way I can just double target it for a knockout next turn. Yeah, my opponent's just going to forfeit. So, the, you know, the nature of this team does sometimes result in very, very fast games. I wasn't expecting the first game to go like this, quite honestly. But, uh, yeah, I, I think, if anything, um, I was in an okay position from the start. And I obviously got a little bit lucky with the Thunder Dodge there. But the thing is, if my opponent hits that Thunder, then I get the free switching into my Pelipper. And once Pelipper comes in, like, all I have to do is literally hurt... Earthquake and Hurricane everything since nothing on his team could have really taken the combination of those attacks So that's why I was willing to take that risk on the first turn I was willing to just go for the damage so uh, pretty quick first game here Maybe we'll be able to fit in three games in today's episode, but yeah uh, Like I said, you know, I really want to do uh, kind of kick things into the next gear and start trying to get my rating uh, as high as possible uh, You know, this is road to rank so I will do my best to you know, keep the ladder going, but I have been playing some games off screen, uh, really just to test other things out. And uh, I'm really excited. Like I said, uh, this team, you know, I brought to London and I was really disappointed because I went six and three with it. I didn't make it at two day two. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's always a bummer when you go out like that. But uh, if anything, the London International, which I'll probably be doing an analysis of, uh, I really want to just cover it and go over uh, some of the top teams and players and what they used. Uh, and yeah, there, there was a lot of cool stuff that came out from that tournament, so I do want to just break it down. But uh, let's go on to the second opponent. Chao is running a team of, you know, kind of standard looking team of Pelipper, uh, Pelipper Tapu Lele, Garchomp, Porygon 2, a uh, Lola Marowak, and the Celesteela. So normally when I see Porygon 2, like there are a bunch of options. I can Gyarados to go for the Taunt. Or I could, I could go for the rain mode here, honestly, with Golduck Pelipper, and that's sadly tempting, to be honest. The only issue is, sometimes, like, Porygons can survive the, uh, Z-move from Golduck and the Scald or a Hurricane from Pelipper, and sometimes that causes problems. But, I don't know, my opponent's team looks really weak to that as a whole. Uh, I do like Metagross a lot as a third. And for the last one, Zerkatree's honestly not too bad. Mm, but the thing is, if Trick Room goes up, then I'm kind of in a predicament. Uh, I could just go with Lele. Yep, you know what? Let's go with Tapu Lele. The reason why I want Tapu Lele is because I really like the Choice Band Metagross plus Tapu Lele Psychic Terrain combination. Uh, that's kind of where I started my team with. Uh, people just underestimate the power of Choice Bands and Headbutt uh, under Psychic Terrain. Now, one of the unfortunate things about running Metagross in this format is you kind of are reliant on moves that are not 100% accurate. So one of my losses on stream against Ben Kiriaku, uh, like in game two, I just missed Zen Headbutt against the, uh, what was it? the Marowak right away, and that was a pretty rough start for me, but, okay, we see Celesteel, and we see, uh, the Porygon lead here for my opponent, so, not too bad here, Celesteel is a little bit concerning, but, uh, you know, I do have ways to deal with it, let's see what download boost Porygon gets, gonna be special tech, okay, so with this, I'm actually just going to double up and try to nuke the Porygon right away, so I'm gonna go for, let me just make sure I click the right one, because, of course, I do have Scald and Hydro Pump, and you want to use Hydro Pump because it is more damage. So, I am just going to, yeah, Scald and Z-Move into Porygon, and we'll see if they can, this can pick up the knockout. Like, Golduck Z-Move under the rain, truly one of the strongest attacks in the game. We don't see a Protector or any switch outs from my opponent, that's promising as well. I could have targeted down Celesteela, but the thing is, if I, did not, if I deny my opponent Trick Room, then Golduck just outspeeds everything. 
and that was something that I really wanted to be able to do. So I'm not sure if this combination will be able to pick up the knockout. It kind of depends how invested Porygon 2 is in special defense. Um, but I am basically max special attack with both Gold Duck and Palifur. Ah, that looks like it's not going to be able to uh, get knocked out from the Skull. Let's see. I feel like it's going to hang on. Oh no, it actually does pick up the knockout. Huh. So maybe a low damage or a high damage on one of the two. Uh, we do see Leech Seed come out from Celesteela. So, Leech Seed, not very surprising of an attack. If you guys have watched the London International at all, or been playing, you know, VGC17, you'll know that Celesteela, of course, uh, really one of the most common Pokemon out around right now. And that's for good reason. It's got incredible typing, super bulky, and has substitute access. Uh, very, very good stats overall. And can hit really hard with a Heavy Slam as well. So it's going to be Pelipper coming out from my opponent's side. That's pretty cool to see. Also fine by me. Uh, let's see. I do have Tapu Lele and Metagross in the back, so I do want to be able to Tailwind. And, uh, I could Hydro Pump, I could also Skull, could also Ice Beam, double into Pelipper. Actually, yeah, let's do that. I want to be able to just knock out Pelipper before anything else. I'm just going to Hurricane Ice Beam. I don't know how fast a Pelipper on my opponent's end is, though. Like, I'm thinking it might be on the slower spectrum, given that he has a Porygon 2, which indicates that it's more Trick Room oriented. And uh, I am modest max special attack, and Celesteela goes for protect, which is perfect since I didn't aim an attack into that slot. But I know it's not doing very much offensively right now, and I know that if I attack into it, it can just heal back really. Um, so I'm going to get this Ice Beam off against Pelipper. And yeah, just, I just am able to outspeed with my Pelipper and get the Sword off, so that might be able to pick up the knockout, as it does. Nice. So, two knockouts in two turns. Celesteela is still healing back from Leech Seed, but that is obviously not too bad right, right now for me. And uh, yeah, Golduck and Pelipper putting in a lot of work as a lead combination right now, being able to nuke that Porygon 2 immediately, and now being able to uh, basically one-hit KO or two-shot that Pelipper. So uh, definitely feeling pretty good about my position right now. It's going to be Tapu Lele as my opponent's last Pokemon, or not last one, but uh, you know. yeah, last one as in uh, last one he has <laughs> available on the team. Well, I don't know what I'm saying right now. I am so tired. Traveling to London and then studying for exams. Uh, I'm going to be up all night studying after this as well. But uh, yeah, it's been a grind for sure. Um, so with Lele and Metagross in the back, I still want to be a little bit uh, aware of Solo Steel. So what I'm going to do is just switch into Metagross. And I'm actually going to Tailwind. So what this allows me to do is it allows me to outspeed Tapu Lele after this turn with Metagross, and Celesteel I can't do very much against Metagross. Like, he might have Flamethrower, but I do have the Rain up. Uh, we've seen Cel two of Celesteel's attack ready in Leech Seed and Protect. Those are almost always givens. Uh, you'd assume maybe Heavy Slam as well. Uh, Lele is just going to go for the Psychic, and it is going to target down that Metagross slot. I am going to be able to resist that, and... Uh, Gets a critical hit there, uh, but Lele reveals the life form, which is also pretty good to see. Uh, one of the reasons why I did conserve Gold Duck though is because Celesteela is still a major threat, and I want to be able to knock out everything around the Celesteela so I can just start, you know, knocking it out. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty good now because I do have the Tailwind up, so all I have to do is launch attacks into the Lele slot to pick up a knockout. Um, I'm thinking maybe I actually, instead of going for Meteor Mash. No, it's the same accuracy anyway. Yeah, so I'll just Meteor Mash into Lele here and Skull. Uh, I'm going to fish for a burn onto Celesteela because that would be nice. Uh, basically, the goal of this game for me ha really has been attack everything around Celesteela because, yes, Celesteela is a really bulky Pokemon. Yes, it's really strong, but against Hyper Offense, you can only Leech Seed one Pokemon at a time, and you can't do very much damage in return. So if I knock out all of Celesteela's partners, then it's basically just sticking around doing nothing. Uh, he's not even going to protect here with Lele, so if I hit this Meteor Mash, I should be the game over. A Scalder still actually does a pretty comfortable amount. Meteor Mash does connect with the Lele, which is really nice, so that's going to be a guaranteed knockout. And it's 4v1 now against Celesteel, so he's probably going to Leech Seed this next turn, but, you know, I'll, oh, he actually goes for the Substitute, which is even better for me, I think. Uh, because that means he's getting less recovery this turn. And, yeah, I'm probably just going to switch my Metagross out here. Uh, he can't even do any damage right now. He's barely done any damage to my team at all, honestly. And once again, that's kind of the nature of this team, right? You just are able to attack around really, really quickly. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to go for the Scald into Celesteel and switch back out into Golduck. And, you know, Celesteel is honestly one of the few Pokemon in VGC history, especially in VGC 17, like in literally 1v3 or even 1v4 a team if played correctly. And now the thing is, my opponent wasn't able to get any status conditions or much damage off against any of my Pokemon, so all I have to do is keep switching around to block the Leech Seeds, and he's taking a considerable more amount of damage than he is healing right now. It's probably going to go for a Leech Seed onto Golduck here, as uh, Golduck actually avoids it as well. Uh, Rain does stop here, but that's fine. So, 
Uh, with Psychic Terrain still up, what I'm going to do here is uh, switch out the Pelipurge. The Celesteel is also just a slow Pokemon, so that's another thing that I've got going for me. And, yeah, like, he can Leech Seed my Golduck here, but the thing is, if you're Leech Seeding, that means you're not substituting. If you're not substituting, that's good news for me. So I don't want to risk missing anything, so I'm just going to switch Pelipper out. And I'm actually going to go into Lele right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, kind of a long, drawn-out game, but... I can see, you know, if you're in my, my opponent's position, it's not necessarily over, and if there's, like I said, any Pokemon that can uh, really solo or duel, like, you know, 1v3 or 1v4 team, it is Celesteela, and you always have to look for the win conditions with Celesteela. A lot of it hinges off predicting the right switch outs, going for Leech Seed and Substitutes at the right time, and uh, there are a lot of, you know, cool plays you can really make around it, but uh, like I said, my opponent, you know, unfortunately fell behind a little bit too far for Celesteela to really be able to solo things out here, and uh, that's because, you know, it was like Celesteel's partners weren't protecting, so I was able to just target them off. Uh, actually, he never went for protect on the time I targeted that slot. So uh, this team being the hyper-offensive team it does, or it is, uh, you can kind of just do it like that. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, he's not going to give up yet, but that's fine. <laughs> so, kind of a long, drawn-out finish for you guys here, but I'm just basically switching out constantly to deny the Leech Seeds. And uh, Scald Burn would be really nice, but no immediate rush for that. Yeah, as it does bring it under 50%. He actually goes for a heavy slam. Let's see if it's into a Lele slot. Uh, it is. So my opponent probably going to be able to pick up a knockout here. That's actually even better for me because I get the free switch and back into Pelipper. So now I just double Skull for the win. Uh, let's see what stat increase it actually gets. It's going to be a special defense. So uh, Beast Boost, really, really cool ability. Obviously, you're able to boost your strongest stat. Kill and Peter's out, but now I just go back into Pelipper. But this is why you don't give up with Celesteela, right? Like... Be, if you're able to predict the poke, a Pokemon coming in at the right time and pick up a knockout and catch your opponent off guard, like, that can put you in a really good position. Another thing is, like, if, given the position I was in, I was like, oh, it's fine losing Tapu Lele, especially because I don't have the Z-move access on that anymore. But in other positions, like, you do have to be very, very careful on what you switch into. I'm still not going for the Hydro Pump because I don't want to risk a miss. Like, these are positions where any one miss and uh, missing any one turn of damage is actually a very big deal. So, I'm just going to double Scald here. That might be able to just pick up the Knockout, especially with the Rain Boost backup. But even if it doesn't, he'll get a Leech Seed off and maybe a Protect, but I can just switch back out. But, yeah, once again, this is why you don't give up with Celesteela because it's so bulky with Leftovers, with Leech Seed. There are very few Pokemon in the format that can hit it for... Uh, you know, one hit KOs. Obviously, you've got that. One of the reasons why I do have Zerka is actually for Celesteela. I didn't bring it into this matchup because my opponent did have a Marowak, but uh, let's actually get a disconnection here. Was that? That wasn't on my side. Okay. <laughs> so my opponent either deciding, uh, yeah, this game is too long, or maybe he had to run away, um, or just didn't want to deal with it. But yeah, that game was going to end anyways, so uh, we do pick up another win. Uh, and that does mean we do have time for a third uh, episode, or a third game in this episode, which is pretty exciting. Um, so far, you guys have definitely seen you know, the hyper, hyper offensive core of this team. I mean, this whole team is hyper offense, but we're going to find a Japanese opponent for our third opponent of the day. This one rocking a team of a uh, pretty standard looking team, Garchomp, Tapu Koko, Gyarados, uh, Celesteela, Porygon 2, and Marowak. So kind of like a big six core, but I'm not going to call it that, Like, or I shouldn't call it that because it's really not big six. I do want to go with the rain lead option again, Like, but uh, Porygon is definitely really scary. Honestly, my opponent just doesn't have much for rain though, so I am just going to go with the rain lead once again. Maybe I can just you know, knock out Porygon, just like the last game. In the back, I uh, definitely want Metagross, and I think I'm still going to want Lele here because I get terrain advantage. Uh, although Zerga Tree is kind of tempting, especially by the Night Trick Room. Mm -hmm. Gyarados is worth it too for Marowak Archon, but you know, my opponent might be a little bit afraid to even bring those. You know what, I'm going to go with Lele, yeah. Lele can hit Porygon 2 pretty hard uh, with Psychics. Uh, otherwise, yeah, so... With my opponent's team, I think you might actually want to consider leading Tapu Koko, which is why uh, Metagross actually might have been an okay uh, lead option for me here as well. And this team really has two main leads, like Pelipper, Golduck, or Metagross Tapu Lele. Um, but the thing is, there's a lot of cool things you can do with Tapu Lele in the back too. So if you lead like Gyarados Metagross or Zerka Tree Metagross, you get the Intimidate off, and you have Volt Switch option immediately with Zerka Tree, uh, and those are both big deals. So, I'm going to lock in here. Let's see what my opponent decides on how, what he ends up bringing. Because, you know, there's a reason why my opponent's team features some of the strongest Pokemon in the format right now. Uh, you know, that kind of core is just really strong. I don't think it's, like, comparable to, say, 2016 Big Six or 2015 
uh, Chalk, which was for Satellite Heatran and Moongus Landorus uh, Kangaskhan, because I think BGC 2017 as a format is just a lot more wide open. But, you know, it definitely contains some very, very strong threats, overall bulky and offensive threats. So I'm going to go with Pelipper and Gold Duck. It's going to be Gyarados and Porygon 2 coming out for my opponent. Uh, that's actually pretty good for me here, because I can just go for the double... I mean, the exact same thing that I went for in the last game. Now, I don't know whether that'll pick up the knockout or not. And I actually lost round 8 at the London International because my Zen Headbutt, Wood Choice Band, and Psychic Terrain, and my Scald from Pelipper uh, missed the knockout on the Porygon. Uh, so Porygon's going to download here. It's going to be a special attack increase. I believe we saw Intimidate go before Drizzle as well, so that means that Gyarados actually is faster, but that's not really a major issue. I don't want to protect it. Nope. So, going to Z-Move, going to just Hydro Vortex, and going to target Porygon too. So, let's see. Um, he's not protecting the switching out here. But, that's okay with me. I don't think Gyarados... Gyarados can Thunder Wave here. Like, that's the one main thing. Um, but, yeah, if we do pick up this knockout onto Porygon, it'll be kind of like the last game. So, let's see if we're able to do it this time. Like I said, Porygons are very, very defensively built. Um, ooh, that should pick, be able to pick up the knockout, though. As Gyarados actually goes for a Dragon Dance, so that's a really strong option. Uh, you know, it's weird to see a Gyarados staying in against a Pelipper and a Golduck, but if there's any reason to, you know, that would make sense. And so that even gets me, Porygon probably went for something like a Thunderbolt instead of a Trick Room, but once again, denied the Trick Room option, Porygon's gonna faint, and we're in a pretty good position from, uh, right now. But, uh, Gyarados at plus one, obviously, is going to be a little bit concerning. I do have the Tailwind option, though. It's gonna be Top of Coco coming in for my opponent as well. Okay. Top of Coco, definitely a little bit scary. Um, but I, you know, he can't discharge unless he switches out, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to Tailwind to get the speed advantage, and I'm going to go for the Hydro Pump onto Top of Coco. Uh, I'm going to opt to risk missing Hydro Pump here, because if he's not sashed, uh, he actually protects, which is fine by me, because that means a free Tailwind up, and Tailwind's actually really, really important right now. So, yep, Hydro Pump just going to protect. Let's see what Gyarados goes for. It's going to be the Water Z move here. Uh, the most common item on Gyarados, actually, is the Water Rum Z, so... Uh, that's not something that should be too surprising here. I'm definitely not caught off guard by it. I suppose you should probably target the Golduck slot at plus one with Rain. That could potentially pick up the knockout. Uh, Golduck isn't the frailest of Pokemon, though. And uh, we'll see if I'm able to survive. It's fine if I'm not able to, though, because that does mean a free switch it into my top of the melee. Yeah, it actually does pick up the knockout. That truly shows the power of uh, Gyarados and the Z-move. Of course, boosted by the Rain as well, but hey, that's fine. I get the Tailwind up for free. And uh, Tailwind's always nice to have. Uh, let's see who I want to bring in right now. I uh, forgot my opponent's team, actually. Cell Steel was the last one, I would suppose. I'm going to bring in Tapu Lele, yeah. Because that gets rid of the terrain from the Coco. I do want to double target Gyarados really badly this next turn with the Hurricane and a Psychic. I am a little bit scared because my opponent has Cell Steel in the back this time. That could be a concern. Going for a double target is so aggressive. The thing is, Gyarados plus one Waterfall probably knocks my Tapu Lele out. And he does protect. Ugh, that was so obvious, but I decided to go for it. And I was fearing a potential switch out from the Feeny as well. So let's see what... Uh, or not Feeny, sorry, Coco. He does have Discharge as well, but he, yeah, he's just going to protect himself. Ah, that's a good play. Yeah, but Lele is able to hang on. Uh, hopefully no full paralysis. He's Life Orb as well, okay. And I'm actually gonna go for the... I wonder if I wanted to double target, like, because now he can't discharge unless he switches out. I'm gonna Hurricane and Psychic Gyarados again, because that's also one of the bigger threats to my Metagross in the back. And the Discharge will knock out my Tapu Lele, and that's why I wanted the Psychic Terrain up. And good, he's not switching out with either. So Psychic coming out. Ooh, that does so much. And Hurricane's gonna pick up the knockout onto Gyarados. Let's see if my opponent discharged expecting the double uh, target onto Gyarados. Part of me was contemplating... I guess, yeah, you should discharge here, yeah. Um... So... No... Oh, crit. Is there a paralysis? Full paralysis as well? Let's see. Okay, no. So I'm bringing in Metagross. Let's see what my opponent's last Pokemon is. I think it's going to be Celesteela. Oh, it's Garchomp. 
Oh, that's actually pretty bad. I was playing this expecting Celesteela because now my opponent can just discharge. Combo me out. Hmm. So I'm going to... Yeah, I'm just going to Psychic Zen Headbutt here. I mean, I could Moonblast, but... Garchomp sometimes does carry Assault Vest, but he just has to double protect here. Yep, Coco's protecting... Although... So the thing is, now he's double protected, he can't double protect... Like, he can't protect Coco next turn. So you can't Earthquake. Uh, that could be a big deal, actually. Rain stops, Tailwind expires. Yeah, so I could actually just Choice Band Zen Headbutt into Garchomp and protect my Lele right now. Unless he... Oh, I suppose he actually ch could Discharge Earthquake here still. Uh, because you know that you'll outspeed. He doesn't know I'm banded though. Man, that would be a pretty... That'd be a good play actually. Yeah, he, he, sh he could just Discharge... Yeah, he's going for it. Well, I don't know actually if he's going for Earthquake yet. But uh, that combination is going to be pretty deadly on Metagross. And I should have considered the Garchomp in the late game. And he gets some paralysis on Garchomp too. Let's see. Is it going to be Earthquake coming out from Garchomp? Yeah, he does just go for it. So the reason why that actually ends up being an okay play is because uh, he... You know, the thing is, if I'm not banned, I just double protect there. Oh, but I hang on with Metagross. Can I attack through the paralysis? And can I pick up a knockout with Choice Band? I hit it. Can we do it? It's, it might be Sash as well. <laughs> and that's why I use Choice Band Metagross, guys. That's why I use Choice Band Metagross. Oh, the bolt coming in through right there. And uh, with the Psychic Terrain, literally one hit KOs the Garchomp. <laughs> oh, uh, this was definitely a fun episode to feature the new team with. Um, and I'm glad that we got some wins here. Uh, trust me, like other games can be very one-sided. The team matchup isn't in your favor. And... Uh, out of my three losses in best of threes over the weekend, one loss to uh, Ben Kuriaku, one of the guys who actually got top four and one of the best players in Europe really of all time. Uh, that was just like really bad matchup and he just outplayed me consistently. Uh, the other two games that I lost, like uh, they were very less matchup based and um, a little bit RNG, but more of me just not playing as well as I could have. So, uh, you know, this team definitely has some matchups where you have to be very careful of. And obviously I'll talk a little bit more about that as we play along with the team, but uh, I'm pretty content here. We're able to pick up three wins in this first episode with the team. Uh, I will, you know, like I said, start taking climbing seriously and just try to get higher. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, it's been a really, really fun ride with the last team, which I will be doing a team report on as well. And I, there's so much more content that I'm ready to do. I uh, just really got to make it through this week with exams and whatnot. But yeah, that's going to conclude this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. As always, leave a like if you did, and I'll see you guys next time. All right, peace.